All right, guys, so a few of my subscribers had asked me about explaining kind of the aperture shutter speed and ISO in real time, actually physically showing you how it works. So um, right now we have a fairly balanced shot, except for if you notice way out here, we are way overexposed due to the light because we're kind of shooting right into the light. We're not shooting into more shade. So you're going to notice the overexposure, but I myself am pretty well exposed. You can see my features, see who I am, everything like that. So what we're going to do is, I'm actually going to have my camera guy switch between ISO, aperture, and shutter. I'm going to tell him what to do, and then I'm going to explain to you guys what's happening while he's doing that. So the first thing we're going to do is, we're going to, our ISO is set at 100, our aperture is set at 8, and our shutter speed is set at 30. Now 30 is the lowest you can go when you're shooting film. So uh, unfortunately, um, I'm going to do a few more, I'm going to actually take some pictures and show you what shutter speed looks like when it drops under 30 and there's movement because that's the biggest thing is when your ISO and your aperture are good but then you drop your, so your ISO and aperture are good and you drop your shutter say down to a second and the lighting is good but then you get blur so you have to be like on a tripod and whatever you're taking a picture of cannot be moving. Human movements right around 250 to 300 shutter speed wise. Uh, as far as like sports and stuff. Now, just regular, like sitting here moving this like this as I'm moving here, this is probably about 150 to 100, uh, 150 to 200, and I wouldn't really get much blur. Maybe even as low, low as 100. So what I'm gonna have my camera guy do, JP, who's nice enough to come out and help today, we're gonna pop, well, the ISO is at 100. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the ISO up to 400, and you're gonna notice it's really gonna be really overexposed. Is that 400? So if you guys notice, I'm really bright right now, and you may not be able to see everything. So let's jump now to 800, and I probably will not, you probably will not actually be able to see me almost at all. How do I look? Pretty bright. Pretty bright. Am I still there, though? Yeah. All right, so now we're going to jump to 1600 ISO, and you're going to notice I'm probably not, you're going to be even seeable now. Am I, can you see me? I see your shorts. You see my shorts? That's about all. So uh, because of my skin, it's white. It's, uh, it's going to be darker. If you had a darker skin first and someone with a tan, they might be able to see me a little bit better right now. Let's jump back down to 100 ISO now. So as you can see, now when you drop the ISO down, you're going to get better quality and the lighting is going to be, uh, it's going to be darker. So your ISO needs to be lowest when we're, it's a pretty bright day out today. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, aperture, which is sitting at 8 right now, and uh, we're going to bring the aperture up. Um, so let's bring the aperture up. Let's say, let's bring the aperture up to let's say like 14. I should be almost pretty dark. You probably can't see me at all. So how do I look back there? Pretty dark. Pretty dark. Still seeable? Still seeable, very bright. All right, let's get, let's get me all the way out of, uh, let's bring it up to like uh, 18 then. I almost don't want to be, in, be seeable. So 18? All right, so now what we're going to do is, now I'm really dark, so we need more light. So let's bring the ISO up. So can you bring the ISO up so you can kind of get me so I look a little bit better? That's 400. 400? You can see me pretty well now? Yeah. So the aperture's at, at 18, the, shutter, or the shutter's at 30, and the ISO's at 400. Now, did you see where I was really dark by bringing the ISO up? I brought myself back into frame, you know, quality wise, you're able to see me again. But because the ISO is at 400, you are going to have a small quality loss. So, but not big enough for the naked eye to really catch at 400 because of the lighting situation. So, let's, um, let's see here. Let's bring the ISO up some. Uh, let's say, let's bring the ISO up to uh, 16 again. Oh no, let's bring the ISO up to, let's see here. Uh, yeah, 16. So it's sitting at 16, so now I'm overexposed again, right? Yeah. So you can bring your shutter all the way, so let's, uh, not a shutter, but our aperture, let's bring it back. I think the highest it goes is 22. And now do I look that I, I'm a little bit, a little bit see, more seeable. So the aperture is now at 22, ISO is now at 16. So now we're going to go back down to 8 on the, uh, on the aperture and 100 back on the ISO to get back down to what I consider to be the best quality that I can possibly get right now for this scene right here. Now we are going to do a little bit of shooting same way as we're doing right now. We're going to do it in a more bright area so you can actually see it when we bring, we can see a different version of it in a more bright area instead of where it's shaded and then I've got the overexposed going on. We're kind of 
we're gonna flip we're gonna flip it around to where we're in a more bright area going into a more shadowed area. So um, and my shutter shutting at 30 right now. So if we bring I'd say let's bring our ISO back up to uh, 800, and then now let's bring the shutter to get me back back into like a, a nice normal focus or a nice normal light lighting wise, so I'm exposed correctly. And what's the shutter sitting at? So we're at 125 now. This is okay for photography. If you're taking a picture, this would be okay. Now at 800 ISO, you're gonna get a teensy bit of graininess, if not a lot, depending on the lighting situation. If it was much darker, yeah, you're gonna get a lot more graininess. Because it's so bright out right now, the graininess isn't gonna be so bad. Um, but you're gonna get like, um, video-wise, when you bring that, that, that shutter up, it's gonna cause problems as far as uh, kind of a shakiness looking feel to it. The quality of the film is just not gonna be nearly as good. Uh, not including that when you move the, move the camera from side to side, the, uh, it's just not gonna be very smooth. So uh, that's why you wanna keep your shutter as low as possible when it comes to taking video. So now we're gonna relocate into a, uh, a brighter area and we're gonna kinda go through this whole entire thing again and explain it, just so you guys can get, you know, you guys really understand this. And if you guys got questions, leave comments, because I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to, to dumb this down enough so that anybody can understand it. Uh, I'm not saying anybody's stupid out there, but I'm trying to make this as simplistic as possible, and th that's, my, that's my goal here. So if I'm not being simplistic enough, explain it to me, and we can reshoot this video so I can make it a little bit more simplistic for you guys. Because that's my goal here, is to take someone that doesn't know photography, doesn't understand shutter, aperture, and ISO, and they can watch this, and they have a much better grasp on it. So that's where I'm trying to, that's where I'm trying to get with this. All right, guys, so we're back. We've relocated into a different spot. Now this spot is, there's really no shade. I got the sun blaring right into my eyes. We got the uh, aperture at uh, 22, shutter at 30, and ISO at 100. So what this means is that the aperture at 22, that's as high as the aperture can go, I believe. Actually, that is as high as the aperture can go. We got the ISO, which is as low as it can go. So with the ISO at its lowest and the aperture at its highest, the aperture can't go any higher to make me any darker, and this ISO can't go any lower to make me any darker. So the only thing that can make me darker now is my actual shutter speed. So if we brought the shutter speed up, I'm gonna get darker. Let's just go on and bring the shutter speed up a little bit, and then we'll bring it back down to 30. Just bring it up to like 200 or until I'm, until I'm pretty much like pretty dark. So what's the shutter at, 200? Uh, 250. 250. So as of right now, I'm pretty dark, and, uh, and you're not gonna get the smoothness of the camera shot, even if I did bring my, my now, at 250, now that it's at 250, I can actually bring my ISO and my shutter. Uh, I can bring my ISO up, or I can bring my shutter down. So uh, let's bring the ISO up to like 800, or until I'm, I'm exposed correctly. 400, 800 should be should do the do the trick. 400. So with my aperture at 22, my shutter at 250, and my ISO at 400. Now the cool thing about Magic Lantern is, and I didn't mention this before, is that you can actually jump in between ISOs. So it's like, I think it jumps at 10 or 15. So instead of 100, it could be 115, 130, 145, 160, instead of jumping from 100 to 200. So that gives you a little more control with, uh, with Magic Lantern, but we're not really using Magic Lantern for this part. So uh, let's get everything back to normal exposure. Let's drop the ISO back down to 100, the shutter back to 30. And uh, what we're gonna do next, is I'm going to take some pictures with uh, really low shutter speeds. Well, actually, like as bright as it is today, I would actually need a filter to take pictures because I can bring my aperture up to 22, my ISO at 100, but my shutter, well, if it drops anything under probably, say, 10, one-tenth of a second, it's going, to be, uh, it's going to be way too bright. So I'm going to snap a couple pictures, bright pictures, and I'm going to talk about them as I'm taking them. And uh, hopefully at the end of this thing, you guys understand aperture, shutter, and ISO a little bit better. So we have our ISO at 100, shutter at 30, and the aperture at 22. So I have mimicked that here on the manual settings of my Canon T3i. I'm going to take a picture and show you guys what it looks like. All right. So that should be popping up on the screen right now. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my shutter, because you can't drop your shutter under 30 when you're shooting video. So I'm gonna drop my shutter all the way down to 10. So 
and you're gonna notice that it's gonna be way overexposed and I gotta keep this real still or it will get out of focus. All right, that doesn't look too bad. It's not terribly overexposed. It's definitely overexposed though. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it down to a one second. So it's gonna take a whole second exposure. Now I'm pretty sure at a second, it's gonna be completely overexposed. It's not, there's a little bit of detail as you guys can see on the screen right now, but not a lot. So we're gonna drop up to one fourth of a second. So we're at one fourth in the shutter, F22 and ISO at 100. Now I'm gonna add a little shake to this because if I'm not very steady, the, the, the actual shot will be very blurry. And if you notice that, it's a very blurry shot. Now I'm gonna take the same exact shot and I'm gonna be a lot steadier. And it's not nearly as blurry. So anyways, I hope this helps you guys out. Again, leave, send messages, leave comments. Let me know what you thought of this. Hopefully this helped you out. Um, if it didn't, we can go over this video again. I can explain it to you all over again. Anyways, you guys have a wonderful day.